I've been working with SQL since 2004 in a range of roles in my career, side projects and this database star website and YouTube channel. I've made some mistakes and found out what works and what doesn't. And in this video, I'll share my best tips for improving your SQL and things to avoid doing. The first tip is to use column aliases. A column alias is a name that you can give to your column in your results set. They are great at making your results more readable by you and other team members. They can also help the consumer, such as a reporting tool or application, by making the column easier to process. This is especially true for columns that involve functions. The second tip is to use table aliases, which is a shorter name you can apply to your table within your query. It makes it easier to refer to your table elsewhere in the query, makes your query smaller, and it's required if you need to query from the same table more than once. It can also help the autocomplete functionality in your editor, which can save you time. Next, format your code and be consistent with it. Formatting your code is better than not formatting your code. It makes it easier to understand and work with. How you format your code is a personal preference. Do you indent or not? Uppercase or lowercase? New lines or on the same line? You could format your code manually, but most SQL editors include a formatting feature that can be run with one or two clicks. Some editors also allow customising the formatter. The first suggestion is to be consistent. Format your code and scripts in the same way, so you get used to it and don't have to think about it too much. The second suggestion is to follow what your team is doing if you're working in a team. Even if this goes against your own preferences, it's better to be consistent and align with what the team is doing. This way it helps out your team and everybody else that works on the same code base. Tip number four is to version control your files. This is for simple SQL scripts as well as the development work on your features or projects. Version control has many benefits and is widely used in software development, but it's not as commonly used in the database world. It's still possible to use and I recommend it, so you have a history of your changes, can work better with teams and can improve your releases. The next tip is to use common table expressions to break down your queries. A common table expression, or CTE, is a way to define a query within your main query and give it a name. You can then refer to this CTE throughout your query. It's great to simplify your query and define logic in one place and use it many times. It's a very handy feature, especially as your queries grow. If you want to learn more, watch this video here that goes into more detail on CTEs. Sometimes you may want to see aggregated information, such as counts or sums, as well as the details. You can do this by using window functions. A window function allows you to calculate the result of an aggregate query on the whole result or a subgroup of rows while still displaying the details. It's very handy in certain situations, so look into how it works so you know when you can use it. Watch this video here for more on how they work. Tip number seven is to avoid using the natural join or using keywords in SQL. They are not specific enough and they are prone to issues. A natural join is where you use the natural join keyword to join two tables and the join is performed on columns with the same name. The problem is that you can't define the columns. So if you rename columns or add columns that have the same name, they are included in the join and the queries will either break or return incorrect results. It's similar to a using keyword where you specify the columns to join on but the columns need to have the same name in both tables. It removes the details that are required for an effective join. Tip number eight is to use the keyboard shortcuts in your editor. Learn the keyboard shortcuts to run a query, which is usually something like control enter or one of the function keys, as you'll use this a lot. There are a range of other keyboard shortcuts you can use. Learn what they are and get into the habit of using them so you can be more efficient with your time. This is the main tool you're using to write SQL code, so learn how to use it well. Many editors have a list of keyboard shortcuts in their preferences menu, and if not, a simple Google search can help. Don't use the WHERE keyword to join tables. After working with SQL for a while, you may realise that a join between tables is nothing more than selecting from two tables and checking that two columns are the same. This could be done with a WHERE clause and matching on the columns. But don't do this. There is a risk of missing a WHERE condition and getting incorrect results. The WHERE clause is for filtering, not for joining between two tables. It also means you can't use outer joins. The better way to do this is use the join keyword. Tip number 10 is learn how to read the execution plan in your SQL editor and your database vendor. This is the first step to improving the performance of your queries. 
an execution plan is a representation of how the database will run your query. It's shown differently in each editor and database, but the concepts are similar. So learn how to display the execution plan in the database you work with, and how to understand what it's showing you. You don't need to memorize all of the terms and information that you see here. You can start with understanding what's being shown and go from there. If you're using the same logic in many places in your query or your script, define it in a single place and use it multiple times. You could use a view for this, a temporary table or a CTE. Defining the logic once will let you refer to it many times. It ensures the logic is consistent between your queries and it's easier to maintain as you just need to change it in one place. There are a few ways to do this in SQL. You can use a view, a temporary table or a CTE. The option you choose depends on the privileges you have, your query and your preference. Tip number 12 is to get familiar with the data dictionary. The data dictionary is a set of tables and views that the database maintains about objects in the database. A lot of it may not be relevant for you, but understanding what it includes and how to query it is useful. You can use it to find indexes on a table, find all tables that contain a column name, find owners of objects, and much more. Look into the data dictionary objects available in your database vendor and run some queries to see what they contain. The next tip is to avoid using select star in production code. It may seem easy, but it's not recommended. Using select star is helpful to quickly get a sense of what's in the table. However, I wouldn't recommend using it in production code. You often don't need to see all columns in a query, so you're returning data that you don't need, making the query slower. Adding or removing columns can change the data that is returned as well. You also can't tell by looking at the query which columns are returned. It's better to select specific columns you need in your query. If you have any tasks that you do regularly or scripts that you run often, save them for future use. This is a great way to save time. We often open up new query tabs and start typing queries to see the data we want. If there are queries we run often or things we look at, then I would suggest saving the queries as an SQL file so you can use them in the future. Whenever you need to run the query again, simply open the file and run it. This can save you a lot of time. Don't be afraid to use joins. I hear a lot of people say that joins can slow down your performance and to avoid using them. However, joins are not inherently bad. Databases work best when the data is stored in a single place and the core functionality of a database involves joining tables. Databases handle joins really well, and there are a range of strategies you can use to improve performance if you find your queries are slow. So don't avoid joins just because you think they are slow. Design an effective database, write your queries, and improve them if they are slow. Tip 16 is to really explore the power of your SQL editor. It's probably got a range of features that can help you do your job easier. There are a lot of SQL editors used in the industry. They all let you write a query, run it, and explore your database. However, many editors have a range of features that can help you with your job. They could be Git integration, database comparisons, or script generation. So take a look around your editor and see what's available. Don't use a business value for your table's primary key. Use a surrogate key, which is a new column that you define for the sole purpose of being the primary key. It can be tempting when designing a table to use a column that you think is unique for the primary key, such as a person's phone number or a tax ID number. This is what's called a business key or a business value. However, the problem with this is that rules can change, meaning they are no longer unique or the value can change for a record. A primary key should hold no business or user value other than uniquely identifying a row. The best way to do this is with a surrogate key, a new field just for the primary key. Whether you use an integer or a UUID is up to you. Just create a primary key field. Before you run an update or a delete statement, run it as a select statement first. This way you can see the rows that are impacted before you update or delete them. When you update some data or delete some data, there's a chance you've made a mistake in your query and the wrong rows are updated or deleted. One way to avoid this is to change your update or delete to a select. Run the select query and you'll see the rows that will be modified. You can double check these results so they are really the ones you want to update or delete. It's a simple trick, but it can really help. Tip number 19 is to store each piece of information in your database in one place. This is the core of database normalization. If you have data in many places, you run the risk of having bad data. 
If you have data in many places, it's harder to ensure that it is up to date as you'll need to update all occurrences of it. Also, if you have a piece of information that can exist independently of the record it is in, move it to a different table and relate it to the original record. This makes it easier to maintain. Tip number 20 is to document your database. Create an entity relationship diagram and document what each table and column means and does. This can really help you in the future and your team members. You can manually create an ERD in a tool like Lucidchart or Microsoft Visio, or you can automatically generate one from your database in your SQL editor, which many editors let you do. This is a good way to visualize the database. It's also helpful to document what the tables represent and what the columns mean. This is helpful for you in the future and for anyone else who works on the database. In SQL and database design, there are often many ways to achieve the same goal. You'll want to watch this video next, where I explain three different ways to limit the values inside a column and which one I recommend doing. Thanks for watching.